Clinical Chemistry Introduction to Non-Protein Nitrogen Non-protein nitrogen, or NPN compounds, are traditionally used to monitor renal function. Previously, total NPN was calculated, but now we evaluate individual substances. The NPN fraction comprises about 15 compounds of clinical interest. Urea, amino acids, uric acid, creatinine, creatine, and ammonia are the most common analytes, and the majority of these compounds arise from catabolism of proteins and nucleic acids. So looking at this breakdown here, proteins are broken down into amino acids through the process of proteolysis. Proteo refers to protein, lysis means to cut up. Amino acids are further broken down by removing the amine group. Transamination and oxidative deamination are two different methods for doing so. When amino acids lose their amine group, that amine group is converted into ammonia. And ammonia travels through um, the blood to the liver to enter into the urea cycle where it's converted into urea. So we're going to start by talking about urea. Urea is the NPN compound that's present in the highest concentration in the blood. It's the major excretory product of protein metabolism and it's formed in the liver from amino groups and free ammonia. The biochemistry behind it, nitrogen is released as a result of protein metabolism. It's converted to urea and excreted as a waste product. After synthesis in the liver, urea is carried in the blood to the kidney and then filtered out. Most urea in the glomerular filtrate is excreted in the urine, so greater than 90%, but some is reabsorbed in the renal tubules. Clinical application, it's used to evaluate renal function, hydration status, nitrogen balance, adequacy of dialysis, and it aids in the diagnosis of renal disease. There are different methods to evaluate urea in the blood. Enzymatic or urease um, enzyme is used, an electrode, and there's a reference method using an isotope dilution mass spectrometry. Specimen requirements in interfering substances, it may be measured in plasma serum or urine. In plasma, you wanna avoid ammonium ions, so high citrate and fluoride sodium citrate and sodium fluoride tubes must be avoided. It is susceptible to bacterial decomposition, so you want to use it quickly or refrigerate the specimen. Here are the reference values for urea nitrogen in adults. And then the pathophysiology behind um, urea. Azotemia is an elevated concentration of urea in the blood. Uremia, or uremic syndrome, is a very high plasma urea concentration with renal failure, and that's fatal if not treated. So treatment would include dialysis or um, kidney transplant. Pre-renal azotemia is a reduced renal blood flow. Um, so shock, hemorrhage, congestive heart failure, dehydration, or increased protein intake can all um, cause pre-renal azotemia. Renal azotemia is talking about a decreased renal function, so renal failure. Post-renal azotemia is talking about an obstruction of urine flow. The clinical utility of uh, measuring urea, so the blood or serum urea nitrogen, the BUN, and creatinine ratio is used to determine the pre-renal and post-renal causes of uremia. So if the ratio is greater than 20 to 1 and creatinine is normal, then we're going to look at pre-renal causes. And causes would be decreased renal perfusion, so um, not as much blood going to the kidneys, high protein diet, a GI bleed. Uh, or increased protein catabolism. If you have elevated creatinine, then we would consider post-renal um, causes, so mechanical obstruction of urine flow. Mechanical obstruction is typically due to some type of cyst or um, tumor or, more commonly, uh, a stone. If the ratio is 10 to 1 or 20 to 1, it's normal, and if it's less than 10 to 1, uh, we typically interpret that as a loss of renal function or decreased glomerular filtration rate tubular necrosis, decreased protein intake, or liver disease. Uric acid is a product of catabolism of purine nucleic acids. If you remember learning about DNA, um, the bases of DNA, you know that there's purines and pyrimidines. Purines are the bases A, adenine, and G, guanine. Most uric acid is reabsorbed in the proximal tubules and reused. It's relatively insoluble in plasma. At high concentrations, it can be deposited in joints and tissues, causing painful inflammation. Purines are converted to uric acid in the liver. 
Uric acid is then transported in the plasma from the liver to the kidney and filtered by the glomerulus. 70% is eliminated by renal excretion, and the remainder passed into the GI tract and is degraded by bacterial enzymes. Assessment of inherited um, disorders of purine metabolism, confirmation of diagnosis and monitoring of the treatment of gout. It assists in the diagnosis of renal calculi. It prevents or the prevention of uric acid nephropathy and chemotherapy, and the detection of kidney dysfunction. Analytical methods include the caraway method, which involves the oxidation of uric acid, but that has a low specificity. The uricase method is the primary method. Uricase converts uric acid to allantoin. The absorption of uric acid and allantoin are measured, and the difference in absorption after incubation with uricase is proportional to the amount of uric acid. Other method methods include coupled enzyme methods, isotope dilution mass spectrometry, and that um, is the proposed new method. Specimen requirements and interfering substances are listed. Measured in heparinized plasma, serum, or urine. You want to remove serum from the cells quickly to prevent dilution by intracellular contents. Diet may affect concentration overall, but fasting is not necessary. Gross lipemia. Lipemia is talking about um, like if you spin down or centrifuge a tube of blood and the serum part looks cloudy, there's probably a lot of fat in that serum, um, that should be avoided. High bilirubin concentration may falsely decrease results obtained by peroxidase methods. Significant hemolysis with concomitant, concomitant uh, glutathione release may result in low values. Drugs such as salicylates and thiazides have been shown to increase values for uric acid. And then the reference intervals are listed over there on the right-hand side. Pathophysiology, so hyperuricemia, hyper means more, so elevated levels of uric acid, is found in inherited disorders of purine metabolism, gout, increased catabolism of nucleic acids, increased metabolism of cell nuclei, chronic renal disease, and hemolytic or megaloblastic anemia. Hypouricemia, so hypo means less, a decreased level of uric acid is found in liver disease, defective tubular reabsorption, and chemotherapy. Creatinine and creatine. So creatine is formed in the liver, kidneys, and pancreas. Creatine um, does, is able to get phosphorylated and become creatine phosphate. And when that happens, it's able to donate that phosphate group to um, provide energy. And that's a short-term uh, amount of energy that can be provided. Creatinine is formed from creatine and creatine phosphate in muscle, and it's excreted into the plasma at a rate related to muscle mass. Plasma creatinine is inversely related to glomerular filtration rate, and it's commonly used to assess renal filtration function. So creatine, or creatine is synthesized mainly in the liver from arginine, glycine, and methionine. It is then transported to other tissues and converted to creatine phosphate, which serves as a high energy source. Creatine phosphate and creatine can come together to form creatinine, which diffuses into the plasma and is excreted in urine. So it's important to note the difference between creatine and creatinine. The clinical application, we measure it in order to determine sufficiency of kidney function, the severity of kidney damage, and to monitor the progression of kidney disease. Creatinine clearance is a measure of the amount of creatinine eliminated from the blood by the kidneys. The glomerular filtration rate is the volume of plasma that's filtered by the glomerulus per the unit of time. Abbreviated modification of diet in renal disease, or MDRD, equation includes four variables, so uh, serum creatinine concentration, age, gender, and ethnicity, although new equations are being developed and proposed. Analytical methods for measuring creatine and creatinine. Um, so the Jaffe reaction is used for measuring creatinine. Creatinine reacts with picric acid in alkaline solution to form a red-orange chromogen. The kinetic Jaffe method is rapid and inexpensive and easy to perform. It's when serum is mixed with alkaline picrate at the rate, and the rate of change of, in absorption is measured. There are also coupled enzymatic methods that have improved specificity, and then isotope dilution mask spectrometry is the reference method.
Specimen requirements and interfering substances. It may be measured in plasma, serum, or urine. Hemolyzed and enteric samples should be avoided. It may be refrigerated for four days, but if it's longer than four days, the specimen should be frozen. Sources of error, ascorbate, glucose, or glucose, alpha keto acids, and uric acids may increase creatinine concentration measured by the Jaffe reaction. Bilirubin causes negative bias in both Jaffe and enzymatic methods. Patient use of cephalosporin antibiotics, dopamine, lidocaine should be noted as these medications interfere with the analytical reactions. And the reference intervals are listed here. The pathophysiology, so elevated concentration of creatinine is associated with abnormal renal function, especially as it relates to glomerular function. When plasma creatinine is elevated, the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, is decreased, and that indicates renal damage. Creatine, if it's elevated, um, it's associated with muscle disease, so muscular dystrophy, poliomyelitis, hyperthyroidism, trauma, but it's not elevated in renal disease. Ammonia. So ammonia is formed in the deamination of amino acids during protein metabolism. It's removed from circulation and converted to urea in the liver. It's toxic when free, but found in low concentrations in the plasma. It's produced during the catabolism of amino acids and by bacterial metabolism in the lumen of the intestine. Some results from anaerobic metabolic reactions in the muscle during exercise. It's excreted as ammonium ion by the kidney and acts to buffer the urine. The clinical application, it's used to determine the prognosis of severe liver disease in the determination of the severity and prognosis of Ray's disease syndrome. Um, Ray's syndrome is swelling of the brain and liver that's caused by certain viral infections. It's used in the diagnosis of inherited deficiency of urea cycle enzymes and monitoring of hyperalimation therapy. So hyperalimation therapy is when um, rich nutrients are put directly into the veins of patients that are suffering from anorexia. Analytical methods, there is a two-step approach in which ammonia is isolated from the sample and then assayed. And then there's the direct measurement of ammonia by enzymatic method or by ion selective electrodes. Specimen requirements and interfering substances. Venous blood should be obtained without trauma and placed on wet ice immediately. You do not want to use dry ice. Heparin and EDTA are suitable anticoagulants. Samples should be centrifuged at 0 to 4 degrees Celsius within 20 minutes of collection, and plasma or serum uh, should be removed. Patients should not smoke for several hours before collection. Sources of error. Sources of contamination include tobacco smoke, urine, and ammonia in detergents, glassware, reagents, and water. The reference interval is listed there, and then elevated concentrations of ammonia are seen in severe liver disease, encephalopathy, and inherited deficiency of enzymes of the urea cycle.